Hi there, in this video we'll learn about that how we can quantify the monopoly power of a monopolist. So we have an index that we can use to assess it numerically. In this video we will focus on the development of it and how the formula works and definitely after getting the data of the pertinent variables one can easily quantify this. So this is the topic of in a learner index and before we go ahead subscribing to this channel will help this channel to grow and more and more people to benefit from it and clicking the bell icon will enable you to benefit from the latest videos. So let's get to the topic. It is about the monopoly and when the monopolists they set the prices they use the strength that they have which is actually hidden in the negative slope of the market demand curve which is quite inelastic due to which they can charge certain higher prices and the monopoly's ability to set a certain price is basically based upon the difference of the two that is how much above they keep the price as compared to the marginal cost and that difference will determine the profit that how much profit will be earned and that can be earned to the maximum level by keeping this difference to the maximum possible level so this learner index is basically the effect of price elasticity of demand on monopoly price which is relative to the product's marginal cost. So this is actually the definition which is guiding us about the formula of it. And in the formula of it, we will see that the price elasticity of the demand will have a role to play. And the effect of the difference of marginal cost and the price will also be observed in it. So let us note this variable that is the price elasticity of demand. We'll see that as we go ahead. This name learner index is based upon the one who gave this idea and that is the uh, name is Eva Lerner after whose name the learner index term was devised. And this other definition is about the ratio of the difference between the price and marginal cost which is relative to the price. So you will see in the formula that the difference of price and marginal cost is calculated and its ratio will be taken with the price. Uh, we are going to develop this formula and we will see precisely that how it works. And another clue that we must have is that we can say that learner index is actually the negative value of the inverse of the price elasticity of demand that we already focused in a few points above. So this was uh, a number of ways of how we can uh, explain this formula, how we can uh, develop the sense of this formula. Now let us derive this and for that what we do is we take the first order derivative of the profit function because it is about the profit that is going to help us about the monopolies part. And uh, profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. And this is the um, first order derivative of it that we have calculated. And we have focused on this total revenue by putting an, uh, a bar on it. The purpose of putting a bar was to show that it is actually the product of the two that is rise into output. and here we can apply the product rule of differentiation. We have done that. Uh, this is the first uh, term and this is the derivative of the second term plus the second term and the derivative of the first term. So under this line we have the application of the product rule. Whereas the total cost became marginal cost and it is being carried as it was. Now since it was the first derivative we can equate it to zero to make it the first order condition so that we get to the profit maximization. So here we have put it equal to 0, we, uh, now this is 0 so we don't have to write it again and here we can see the same term is uh, carried and here uh, we can see that this term is quite similar to the formula of elasticity of demand and we were already talking about the uh, elasticity of demand in the development of the learner index. So we have shifted it to the right hand side and price minus uh, marginal cost is left on the left hand side. We have already talked about price and marginal cost as well. So you can see that the formula is going into that desired direction. Uh, what we are missing here is uh, uh, its ratio with price. So we have to introduce price. And if we do so, it can become elasticity of demand. So we did that. We divided it by price throughout. And here uh, in this box, and again in the box, we can see this additional price variable. Now uh, we have this uh, overall term. I have kept this term in the box and there is a certain purpose. The purpose is that I want to consider if it is actually uh, 
uh, now equivalent to the elasticity of demand. But when I look at the formula of elasticity of demand, it is this. So it's not exactly what we are looking for. It is basically the reciprocal of what the elasticity of demand is. So if I have this as the elasticity of demand formula, its reciprocal will be equal to this, which I want to have because here this term exists that is delta P over Q into Q over P. So we equate it uh, and that becomes 1 over epsilon. So instead of this, now I can write the reciprocal of epsilon that is price velocity of demand. So in the next step, you will see that we have written it. So this was the purpose and you can see now we are at that stage where the learner index is developed in two of the ways. That is by taking the difference of price and marginal cost and then its scholarship with price and with the inverse of the negative value of the price elasticity of demand. Both of these ways are equally applicable whenever I am to calculate learner index. I uh, can apply either of these formulas depending upon if I am given the value of velocity of demand, I can use this formula and if I am given the value of price and the marginal cost, I can resort to this one. And uh, the answer would be equal between 0 and 1 as we can see by putting the values, uh, the same thing will happen that is the range will be followed. Now the interpretation is there and it's just that learner index will increase if the difference of price and marginal cost increases because this difference is existing in the numerator and as the difference increases the monopoly part will become greater as the numerator becomes greater. Conversely uh, for perfect competition where the uh, market power is at minimum the difference of price and marginal cost will be at minimum that is perhaps equal to zero. So in that case, the learner index will be equal to zero because the numerator has become zero and there will be no monopoly power in this case. So we see by using very simple formula that we have devised here, we can assess the monopoly power uh, of the firm and we can assess the type of the market structure that the firm is operating in. So this was learner index, we thoroughly developed it and we also understood the interpretation of it and this was the background of it. So if you have benefited from this video, you may give it a thumbs up. Thank you.